So, one of the easiest things I think you can do uh, in your wellness program is to make sprouts. Tell me, anyone made sprouts before? Oh, gee, I've got experts here. You guys can be up here uh, talking about it, but this is something I first started to do when I want to say I was in my 20s. Uh, sprouting was really big. So we're talking, you know, 30, 40 years ago now. So, um, like anything, you know, when you, when you do something, it's easy to get out of the habit and you stop doing it and, you know, pick it back up again. I got back into it actually this summer, which actually was this winter, but this summer I went to, this winter, I should say, I went to New Zealand to spend time with my mom and of course there it's summer and my mom is a great sprouter. She sprouts everything and uses them and and um, she just loves, loves to sprout and she also has this really nifty electronic sprouter which I haven't actually seen here, it's a, a, a machine made in New Zealand that actually you plug in and it washes the sprouts automatically and so you don't have to do a lot of what we're doing. But there's something to be said for um, you know, the, the good old fashioned sprout lid, which is what we're going to learn today. And this is what I've always used, although when I first started sprouting, I used just a, a, a preserving jar or a canning jar lid, as you say. We call it preserving, you call it canning, and a piece of muslin. So you can do that as well. Um, so it doesn't have to be fancy. That and a jar, and preferably organic, certainly never use chemically treated seeds or genetically altered seeds that's really all you need and I like to use purified water so I'm not going to use water out of the tap unless it's come through a filter so how do we make sprouts we're basically going to take out now this is actually a mix of seeds you may want to mix your seeds or you may want to use a single seed it depends. You'll have an idea once you experiment what sprouts you like because they all taste different just like vegetables taste different. So if you don't like broccoli you might not like uh, broccoli sprouts. If you don't like uh, mung bean, yes you might not like mung bean sprouts. I mean there, there are things have stronger tastes. So this is a blend of um, peas, lentils and alfalfa. And uh, we actually sell this, oh, and radish seeds and azuki. So uh, we actually uh, sell these already pre-mixed and uh, in uh, one ounce quantities. And in the, I want to say the Nat 101 class, you receive your lid and bean salad sprouting mix as part of one of the kits you now get and we teach you how to <laughs> yeah we've, that's probably a new a new thing um, and we teach you how to actually make sprouts because again it's what you're doing every day in your everyday life plus it's a terrific way to ensure that you do get organic green live food that's absolutely full of enzymes. That's one of the benefits of sprouts, very, very high in enzymes. So what we're gonna do is put uh, a couple of tablespoons, and it looks like this is pre-measured for me, how nice, into our jar. And we're gonna fill the jar about to here with um, filtered water. So we have a filter on this tap And I use cold water. And I don't bother rinsing them first. And we're gonna put our lid on. Now, unfortunately, this lid doesn't fit this jar. So this lid is like for a standard preserving canning jar. It doesn't even fit this. This is too small. It would fit this, 
but of course this is not large enough. So what we used to do, we used to just take clean nylon stick over. You could use you could also use clean yeah. pantyhose. Good idea, yeah. Um, so see how these seeds have kind of clumped together? So what I like to do is just bang bang them a bit or give them a little bit of a stir, break them up, make sure they're not clumped like that because my goal in soaking these for at least the next hour, eight hours I should say, so overnight normally I would soak these. See they're still a little bit congealed. I, I, if you tap it too they break up. So you want those clumps to break up and the, the seeds to be distributed evenly in the jar and basically you're going to soak them for at least eight hours. The goal being firstly to soften them and secondly seeds have something called phytic acid which you want to soak off. Um, it's not particularly um, a beneficial uh, substance. It can bind zinc in your body and um, so it's undesirable. And once this is soaked for eight hours, we're just going to strain this off through the lid. Now, you wouldn't want to drink this water, but you could use it to water your house plants. That would be, you know, because it does have some nutrients in it. And then once you have um, rinsed that off, your which we could probably do now even though we haven't soaked it overnight. I'm just going to pour this off to show you what it looks like. Make sure you strain all the water out. If there's any sticking on the lid give it a good a good tap so they come down. Now you'll see how now they've sort of distributed in the jar. Now what's ideal for draining this and for keeping it um, fresh and at a, in, a, at a, in a good place to start sprouting is um, a dish drainer. So you know if you hand wash your dishes and then put your dishes on a dish drainer, is that what they're called here? Mm -hmm. <laughs> Everyone was looking at me blankly there for a minute. Um, prop them up on the dish drainer, but before they've sprouted, keep them covered with a tea towel or a, or a, or a cloth, and usually within a day, you'll see they will start to sprout. Now I like to keep my sprouts covered until they're at least that long. And you've got to rinse them every day. Sometimes I like to rinse my sprouts uh, morning and night. And then when, when you see the little green shoots coming out, that is when they're ready to eat. So, um, and you can do all sorts of things with them. You can sprinkle them on salads. You can put them in your smoothies. You can stir fry them. You can just eat a handful when you've got the munchies. They're really very, very good. And um, I've only just started sp putting them in my um, putting them in my smoothies. And that's a, a different experience. And I've actually discovered it's a great way to have your greens as well. Um, I've been um, recently using uh, Arbon products and there's a great, uh, there's some of them back there on that back table I wanted to introduce you to. There's a great fiber, which I'm just really excited about. It's really easy to take and it gives great results. And there's also a great protein shake that I've been enjoying. And I have been putting, um, oh, I've been putting parsley in it. I've been putting kale in it. Things that I don't normally really enjoy eating all that much, steamed or fresh. And if you blend it in with your smoothie, you just get this incredible green drink that just tastes absolutely terrific. And so it's a great way to get your greens. I usually throw in half a banana, maybe some um, frozen um, organic mango um, or some organic frozen berries. 
you know, just to give it that extra zing, some antioxidants. Um, but um, it really is a great way to get your green. So sprouts you can do a tremendous amount with. The lecture that you're going to be sent um, via email, have a read through it. It does give you some information on um, some specific ingredients, particularly in things like broccoli sprouts, which contain this anti uh, anti-cancer antioxidant uh, which they've done a lot of work with particularly at John Hopkins University and shown it's really really very uh, very, very beneficial um, there's also um, just an incredible range of, of vitamins D, E, K and C uh, bless you lots of minerals and about 35% protein believe it or not in sprouts so also great for kids, if you can get kids drinking, drinking them in smoothies. Um, you could even, um, I mean it's just such a simple thing to do. So I, I just really encourage you to give it a try. And, um, but the one thing to be really careful about is don't leave them standing like this. You've got to leave them this way, draining. And don't leave them sitting longer than eight hours in the water because they will rot and they can also start to ferment, which um, can, can be an issue. So there's really a, a, a tremendous section here on, um, on the uh, pretty much exactly what I said to do, and um, also some ideas here in this chart of uh, the different types of seeds you can sprout, and I mean there's just a tremendous amount uh, flax seed, um, chickpeas, now that is a really yummy sprout. Anyone ever tried chickpeas? They're really good, then. yeah, they're nutty, they're really excellent. Fenugreek, not one of my favourites. I mean, it tastes really good while you're eating it, but it's with you for the next two days. Probably, you know, not what you really want to be doing, but, you know, it, it's an interesting one. Um, oats, I've actually never tried. There's some here I haven't tried. So it would be really fun if you're into it and try things. Let us know on Facebook or, you know, connect with us and, and let us know um, uh, what you end up trying and how it works out for you. We could start a sprouting club. So any questions about sprouting? We're going to email those to you. Oh, wonderful. Yeah, at, um, so that's why I said make sure we have your email addresses so we can get all that information to you. And we'll also email, email you the link to the uh, YouTube video. Those are also very wonderful to watch. Oh, good. Mm -hmm. How about the bloopers? Did you, did you watch yes, the bloopers? I watched the bloopers. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they're always funny. Oh, dear. So. Follow you on Facebook as well. Oh, thank you, Kelly. Yeah, yeah, that's nice. Yeah, we have a lot of fun. <laughs>